Hello there, everyone. My name is Crazy Caleb, and welcome to Masher the Button. Now, yes, that is the way that the title works. It's not a typo. Uh, it is intentionally made that way. Now, this module originally was a joke module, um, but there actually is a lot that got uh, that, that got remade. Uh, this originally was um, uh, it was FN Llama Cool One Three, uh, but this was remade by the wonderful Epic Toast. Uh, Epic Toast and. Uh, now this this is uh, a brand new module. Uh, this is almost a brand new module. Uh, it is currently 2020 th that it was made, but it is a uh, a new and improved version of the F and Cool Llama module mesh the button. So um, on this module, what we have here is we have a um, a button on the top. Uh, we have a we have a button at the bottom rather, uh, and we have a number we have a number at the top, which means which represents how many times we have to press this button. Um, however, there's going to be a wide variety of different quirks that are going to be occurring on this module, and we have to be careful with how we press this button. So, uh, and when we press the push button, we will decrease the number by one, and to solve the module, we need to get to zero. Uh, however, you can only press the button at certain times, based on the result of the last time you pressed it. Uh, so once you, pr so pretty much the important thing is, is that once you have um, master the button going, you're going to need to kind of commit to it until you get to one of the special quirks, which we'll get into in just a moment. So, um... You can press the you can press the button the first at any time. Please read at least one uh, at least the end of section one before starting the module. So let's get right into this. So when you press the button, something will happen to the module. The different outcomes are listed below, and we're going to go to the section based on what happened. Now there's going to be a wide variety of different quirks as we can see here, um, and we'll get into those in just a second. Uh, and determine when to press the button next. Uh, the same outcome will not happen twice except for section one, uh, which in this case section one is going to be the nothing. So, um, pressing a button incorrectly will still advance the module, but will administer a strike. The changes made to the module will switch back, will switch back after pressing the button again, unless stated otherwise below. So, here are the potential outcomes of mashing the button. Um, there is obviously nothing could happen. Uh, in this case, nothing happens. But when you press the uh, when when it happens to be nothing, you can press the push button anytime as long as it is as long as it is within two seconds of your last press. This is why basically what I'm saying is you have to commit until another quirk comes in. Uh, fortunately, when you strike due to pressing the button at the end of the wrong time, you are exempt from for this rule for one press. So in this case, it just kind of resets um, and it stops the whole two seconds. Uh, this option is far more common than the other options, obviously, because of the fact that it's going to be the main one that's going to be happening. Uh, and exactly four of these presses will not be from this section. So you will be going through four different stages uh, of these nine other different quirks that we have here. <clears throat> which includes the number changes color, which in this case the number will stay this color for the entire module, the entire rest of the module. Uh, the button background changes color, it will stay the exact same uh, as well. Uh, the button text changes, the button text will indeed stay changed as well. Uh, but the rest of these will go away. Um, uh, as you can see here. Um, the screen will go blank and then start flashing Morse. The number starts changing rapidly. The number spins. The module itself spins. Uh, a voice plays and a sound effect plays. So these are going to be all, all we're going to be looking at here. Uh, now, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, as complicated as this might seem, a lot of these sections are quite simple to do. Uh, and as, t as intimidating as it looks, the nice thing is that you only have to do four of them, and all of them are quite simple to learn and understand. So let's get right into this. So let's just start going crazy here. We want to start pressing the button, and we want to make sure that we do it within at least two seconds of your last press. So we're going to be kind of doing it a little bit slowly so we make sure that we don't go over a button, um, over a special quirk that we get. So let's take a look. So let's just start pushing our button, making sure that we pay attention to anything that is going to happen here. Here we go. So now we get our first one here, is that the button text, uh, not the button text, the number will be changing uh, rapidly in this case. So this is going to be from section six. So we're going to note down the color of the numbers in order. It doesn't matter exactly which order we get them in, uh, just as long as they are next to each other. That's what matters here. So we've got uh, 87, 50, and 78. It's very important that you get them in the order that they that they flash in some way, shape, or form, because this mod, this uh, this section is a little bit interesting. So let's go down here. So now, for section six, the number starts changing rapidly. The number will suddenly cycle through three numbers, which we just got, 87, 50, and 78. We're going to take all three pairs of consecutive numbers and follow the first rule that applies to each pair. It's very important that we get this in the correct order because it is consecutive. So now, 
essentially what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be splitting them up into pairs. And no, it's not going to be based off of the um, like least to greatest. It's going to be based off of the order that you get them. So in this case, our first pair is going to be 8750. Our second pair is going to be 5078. And our last pair is going to be 7887. Essentially, as you can see here, I'm going from um, left to right and then looping back around to the 87. So these are going to be the pairs that we're going to be looking at. Now what we need to do is we need to follow the first rule that applies to each pair. So we're going to go through these individually. And this is going to be referring to um, uh, the first number differences compared to the uh, the second number and so on and so forth. Um, so let's take a look and see what we need to do here. So the first number, and the first number will always be the number in the first position. This is exactly why position is in, is very important here, because there is going to be different rules. Because um, the second number might be at least greater than 50, but the first number might not. Or it might be vice versa. So we don't quite know yet. But we need to make sure that we do consecutive numbers so that we make sure we can get the correct rules here. Um, if the first number is at least, uh, at least 50 greater than the second number, uh, in this case, that's not going to apply to any of them, as I can already tell here, just from eyeballing it. Um, and neither is it going to be the second number, uh, at least greater than 50 from the first, from the other one. Um, these guys are not, um, at, these guys are not, uh, a 50, like at least 50 apart from each other. They're all relatively close. I think it's like 30, 37 is the distance that they're from. So, but there is the possibility of there being at least 25 greater than the second number. Here we go. So if the first number is at least 25 greater than the second, let's see if any of these apply here. Uh, if the first number is at least 25 greater than the second number, this applies for the 87 and the 50 here. Here we go. Um, because as you can see here, let's pop out our handy dandy calculator. So uh, 87 minus 50, uh, as you can see, it is a uh, it is a, um, a uh, distance of 37. The first number is at least 25 greater. That is true. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the two numbers together. Uh, now, uh, if we ha uh, one thing important to note is that we're going to module all three numbers by 100. So all we all we simply need to do is if we get stuff like this where it's multiplication, um, we're just simply going to be taking the last two digits, multiple multiplication or addition, uh, take the last two digits. So in this case, we're going to multiply 87 times this by 50 is going to be 50 because in, in this case, the 4300, uh, 4350, and we're only going to be taking the last two digits here because this is what essentially what modulo 100 will result. Uh, next up, um, now the rest of these does not apply to the, uh, now the, these rules do not apply to the other ones here. Uh, these are all going to be too close. Um, however, what's the difference between 78 and 50? It is 28. Now, the second number is at least 25 greater than the first. This is indeed true for this second one right here. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to concatenate the last digits of the numbers, which in this case, we're going to take the 0 and the 8, and we're going to combine them into one number, or in this case, just simply eight. There we go. Now, uh, if the first number is greater than the second number, we're only going to be focusing on this one now because this one does not apply. Obviously, as you can tell, 87 minus 78 is only a difference of 9. Um, now, if the first number is greater than the second, no. If the second is greater than the first, yes. This is going to be true. Uh, we're going to average the two numbers, which in this case means that we're going to add them together. So plus, uh, plus 78 plus 87. We're going to divide it by the amount of numbers that we just added here, which in this case was 2. And now we're going to round down, which in this case would result in an 82. And there we go. <coughs> so now, with this in mind, we've done all of the rules here, and we've gotten all the numbers from this section. We're going to modulo all three numbers by 100, which we just did. Uh, it only applied to the 50. So, uh, we're going to concatenate them together and take the digit root, which in this case simply means that you're just going to take the digit root of all three numbers here. So in this case, the digital root is essentially summing up all of the numbers until it is equal to one digit. So in this case, that's going to be a 5 plus 8 plus 8 plus 2. Uh, that's not 32. 5 plus 8 plus 8 plus 2 is going to give me a 23. We're going to add 2 and 3 together, and this is going to give us a result of 5. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to press the button when the last digit of the timer is equal to that number. Now, as I just mentioned, uh, as I mentioned beforehand, when you reach one of these special quirks, it obviously will be, uh, it obviously will allow you to um, stop and take a break and essentially do some other modules. But now, when we get back into the uh, the nothing quirks, uh, in this case where nothing is happening uh, at the top here, we need to make sure that we continue going with at least these two seconds. That will apply immediately after the quirk is done as well. So just keep that in mind. So. Let's press this when the last digit is a five of the, in the um, in the bottom timer here, and just like that, it's good to go. And now we're going to continue counting down again. Now, 
that quirk will never apply again. So we're past that point. So let's continue until we get another quirk here. That's one of the four down. And let's see what happens next. It's taking a while, that certainly is true. Okay, the, uh, the, the number disappears. And it is flashing Morse. Yes, screen goes blank and starts flashing Morse. So we've we got this one. Here. So this one's actually another fairly simple one to do. So let's go down here. So let's just start receiving the Morse code. So let's do dash dash uh, dot dot dash dot 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 dash dot dash. Uh, that looks like the end of the message. Um, Dot dash dot dot. Uh, oh, hold on. So, um, what's gonna be happening here is I'm actually probably just gonna restart the uh, the whole Morse code, but I did get one word at least. I think uh, interpret Morse, interpret the Morse code, which will be given giving you three different words, some of which may not be words. In this case, you can get stuff like XD, uh, haha. You can get uh, press P R E S. That is indeed an actual thing. But essentially, what's gonna happen here is they will be present in some of these texts here. So, uh, these words can be found in one of the rows below, which contains the text of one of the manuals from FN Lama Cool 13. Determine which manuals from the words will be consecutive in the manual, but it will be in forward or backwards order, which is what we're going to be, uh, which is what we're going to be trying to figure out. Here. So dash, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, uh, excuse me, dot, uh, then dash, dot. Uh, dash, dot, 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 looks like that's the end of the world. Uh, dot, dash, dot, 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 dash, dash, dot, uh, dot, 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 and then dash. Okay. Alright, so now, let's take a look here. So, uh, and the order in which you actually get them in, um, after it transmits the last word, it will shortly disappear. But essentially, you'll be able to figure out, um, if you can just figure out the three words that you're looking at, you can figure out the order in which you came in, um, just as long as you get them in the correct order. Um, but just be careful to check and see where it actually ends. Uh, but let's go over to Morse code here. Let's, let's get these guys into, uh, letters here. We've got dash dash dot, which is golf. We've got dot dash dot, which is Romeo. Dot, which is a, uh, echo. Um... I believe I noted down one too many echoes, maybe? Is that an actual thing? Green. Uh, it's gotta be. It's gotta be just green. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yep. I uh, just had to make sure of that. Hmm. I probably noted that something down wrong, but in this case, we have green as our first one. Um... Dash, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, so I'm not really sure, dot, dot, dash, yeah, I know that one too many dots, okay, um, dash, space, dot, 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 I forgot a dot, dot, okay, and that looks like the end of the sequence, uh, so I'm gonna put this one in the front, or rather, I'm gonna put this green down at the bottom here, so let's give myself another space here. Let's put green down at the bottom, uh, because this is what's this appears to be the last one. There was a bit of a longer display uh, pause there, uh, and let's continue on with the translation. So we've got dash, which is tango, uh, four dots, which is hotel, one dot, which is echo. Okay, we're getting actual words here, and then we have dot dash dot dot, which is a lima, two dots is an India, dash dash dot, which is a golf, four dots, which is a hotel, one dot, which is a tango. The light green is that a message? Uh, light. Hmm, here we go. So it is likely the green light, which means that I probably just messed up the order that I got them in. So let's find the break here. Um, dash, dash, dot, dot, dash. Dash, space, dot, dot. Here, this would be where we're beginning. Hmm. Well, 
what appears to be the green light. That's that's the thing. It's just determining whether it's in whether it's forwards or backwards can be a bit tricky. So bear with me. It's finding that break is really difficult. To, it is really difficult to tell. Um, dash. I believe that that was the break right there, and then it should be dash dash, or no, it's the light green. Where does it disappear? Ooh, maybe it's, oh, yeah, right, it's light green, the, that's where it disappears, okay. So, yeah, so it's, it's light green and the, that makes sense, okay. So, it is going backwards in this case, apologies for not, for not getting that for so long, but, um, it is light green, the, it ends at that, um, yeah, then dot, dash, dot, dot, that's where the break comes in, so, yeah, so it's going backwards, um, so we are going to be using, if it is, uh, if it is forwards, we're going to use the leftmost number, is, uh, otherwise we're going to use the rightmost and what we're going to do is, from this text, we're going to get a uh, number here to press. This one's fairly simple to do. Um, we're going to press that button when the last digit of the timer is equal to that digit. So, uh, this is going to be a 7, since we're using the rightmost. We're going to press it when the last digit of the timer is a 7. Okay, and let's continue. Okay. The button of the color changes. Okay, interesting. So let's go up here. So the button color changes. Let's see what we have here. Uh, button background color changes color. Indeed it does. That's going to be section three. Okay, using the flowchart on the next page, we're going to find the cell whose background color is the same as the button's color. If, this, if, if the rule in the cell is true, follow the yes arrow. Otherwise, follow the no arrow. So we're going to start at blue, and then what we're going to do is we're going to continue following arrows until you visit an already visited cell. So, let's go through this. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna start at blue, and we're gonna go through these yes or no conditions. Make sure you pay attention to where the arrow is actually pointing and where the yes or no are going to. So, do we have an RJ45 point? Press, yes, we do, it's right here. Um, several RJ45 points, yes. So it's gonna be yes, we're gonna go down to yellow. Bomb was started on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. For me currently, it is indeed a Monday, so that is gonna be a yes. We're gonna go back, to, we're gonna go up to cyan here, the number of D batteries is more than one. False, because we only have one D battery present. So that is going to be a no, or to magenta. Uh, so far, we've visited uh, blue, yellow, magenta, and uh, cyan. Um, Bob or FRK indicator present. We do not have any indicators. That is going to be a no. And we're now at gray here. The number of modules is less than or equal to 31. That is indeed true, uh, because we only have one module. So that's going to be going down to green. Less than or equal to half of the solvable module are solved. Well, there's zero solved and there's only one module, so that is indeed going to be true. We're going to head over to red. Wow, we visited every single one. Uh, at least one strike at the time the button was pressed. No. Uh, so we're going to go back down over to yellow. Yellow is going to be the cell that we visited twice. We happen to visit all of them um, until we reached yellow. Uh, and in this case, yellow is going to be the final one that we're going to land on. So, based on the color in this cell, Determine when to press the button, and the starting cell counts as visited by the way. But in this case, yellow was the one that we landed on twice. We need to press when the, the second digits are the same. So we can press this at zero, zero. Back then, and we will be one click away from solving this module here. Oh, and immediately we get we get sent into the the uh, the number color changes background. The number changes color. Um, so. Let's take a look. So number two, this one is another fairly simple one. We're going to take the color of the number and look at the row corresponding to it. It's going to be a blue. Uh, and now uh, we're going to read this as binary, or in this case, we're simply going to do eight, four, two, and one. Um, and then we're, uh, we're going to read this as binary where the cells that have the, at least one character in common with the serial number are ones and the other cells are zeros. Press the button when the last digit of the countdown timer is this number, modulo 10, and zeros are marked as a zero, with, uh, as an Oscar with a slash through it. So let's take a look at our serial number, and we need to figure out which characters have at least one uh, one character present that is common with them. Uh, zero, seven, or Quebec, none of those are present. Uniform, Whiskey, Romeo, none of those are present. November, Hotel, Hotel is indeed present, as we can mark that row. Uh, Tango, Yankee, and Two, Two is indeed present. Now, with these rows, with these uh, rows, uh, excuse me, columns highlighted, 
All we're simply going to do is we're going to add these numbers up, modulo it by 10, and then we're going to press it when that last digit is that number. So in this case, 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. We're, we can press this when the last digit is a 3. Okay, and now we're done. And just like that is a solved module. So we had four different quirks this time around, and I want to go. I want to hopefully be able to cover, cover them all, but just know that I will only be doing one more example, and I won't be covering all of them. However, all of these are actually fairly sight readable to do. So let's get right back into this. So we've got, um, so we've done here. Let's see what we've done. We've done number changes color. We've done um, uh, button background changes color. Screen goes blank. It starts flashing Morse code, and the numbers start rapidly changing. I would love to see some number spins, module spins, voice play sound effects, stuff like that, but. If it, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So let's get right into this. I'm not going to bother trying to re-roll for it because that's going to be a lot of the uh, of trying to do the module over and over again just to get one specific case. These are fairly set readable. Uh, these are not too bad to do. Probably the one that I want to go over the most is the button text changing color. Uh, but again, that's not too bad. All of these are fairly simple to understand here. Um, so let's get into one more example here. Let's take a look. Yeah, with, with, when nothing is happening uh, and you're just simply pressing the button, just be careful. Take your time with it. Um, it can happen at any given moment. So let's just get right back into this. Hmm, this is taking a while. Okay, the number disappears. Is it going to start flashing Morse code? It is dash dot dot dash dash dot, dot dash dash dot dot dash dot dot dash space dash dash dash. Okay, cool. And I got the whole message in the correct order. Perfect. So now let's go back down to the Morse code here. Um, so Morse code. Uh, so we got this in the correct order. I know that for a fact. So um, let's take a look. So we've got Tango. Uh, we've got India. Um, we have Mike. We have Echo. Time. <laughs> we have Alpha. We have um, we have Delta, and and Delta, and then we have. Two. Okay, so we've got time, add two. So let's take a look. I wonder if it's going to be the add time module. So let's search up time. Well, these, oh my god, we got to get past these timers. Okay. Um, uh, add time, uh, so we need to find it. Uh, time, add two. Yes, here we go. So it's going to be a backwards case once again. So it's going to be time, add two. Perfect. So now, uh, this is in backwards order, so in this case, uh, if it is going to be forward, leftmost, otherwise rightmost, we're going to be using the rightmost, uh, which is going to be a 9 of the 6-9 set right here. So we've got last digit being a 9. Okay, and let's continue. That's one of our four, quirk, one of our four quirks down. Uh, let's see. Oh, that was the sound effect that played there. Okay, so now let's go down to the sound effect section. Uh, so this is going to be a sound effect place. That sounded like an explosion, if I know what I heard right there. So we're going to highlight the section right here. So we're going to find the sound in the table below, uh, then find the cell corresponding to the last digit of the number on the module, which in this case represents a 3. It's representing the number on the module. So in this case, 3 is right here. So now, if the last digit of the number on the module is 9, however, because there's only uh, 0 through 8 here, uh, use the number in the same cell as the sound that was played, plus 4 modulo. So, now, we have a couple of rules that we need to look at here. Press the button when the last digit of the timer is, e uh, in, uh, is equal to the number in the cell specified by the rules below. If the two cells are the same, use that number in that cell. If the two cells are in the same row, use the number uh, in the other cell in that row. If the two cells are in the same column, use uh, the number in the other cell in that column. If none of the above apply, use the number uh, in the only cell that is not in the same row or column as the other two. So essentially, it's like just trying to find the, um, the position of the one that doesn't match. Uh, or the one that does match. So in this case, column, use the one that's remaining. Row, use the one that's remaining. Um, if neither, use the one that doesn't intersect with any of these guys. So in this case, that'll be the top right here because we've got the second and third row uh, taken care of, and we've got the first and second column taken care of. 
And now we're going to use this number that we get here as a two, and we're going to be pressing the last second digits when it is equal to two. Okay, let's continue on. Fairly simple to do. It's probably my favorite one of them all. This is the fact that you can get the megalovania. Okay, button color changes again. So now we're going to go back up here to this flowchart, uh, and let's follow this. So we've got RJ45. No, we don't, actually. Um, it's going to go to Cyan. Uh, number of D batteries is more than one. That is true in this case. So we're, we're going to mark that with a yes. We're going to go yes over to gray. Uh, the number of modules is less than or equal to 31. Yes, that is true. Um, less than, uh, That's going to go down to green. Less than or equal to half of the solvable modules are solved. Yes, that is true. It's going to go over to red. At least one strike. No. Over to yellow. Bomb was started on a Monday or Wednesday. Yes. We go up to cyan. Cyan, is, cyan has been one that we visited before. Um, uh, so we are going to be using the rule for cyan. Uh, press when the second digits add up to 10. So we can do this and a 1-9. Let's start right here. Okay. And let's continue on. And let's see what our last work is going to be. Aha! The text changes text. Um, so the button text changes here, as we can see here. Let's get rid of our notes. And now what we're going to do here is the button, the text on the button should be split into uh, its individual letters. So in this case, we're going to have Hotel Alpha Lima Uniform Drop. And what's going to happen here is that we're going to be applying a series of different rules um, based off of the letter that we get here. So start with the number displayed on the module, in this case, two. Uh, and from left to right, perform the instructions corresponding to each letter. In this case, if it happened to be upside down for some reason, which I'm hinting that it is going to be upside down, uh, for the first letter, replace X in the instructions with 1. Um, and, um, so X is going to be equal to 1 for our first instruction, so we're going to mark that as 1. But now, for every letter that follows, we're also going to replace X with that number, modulo 20 from X, the X column of the last used row. So we're going to be applying the instruction, uh, and then we're going to be changing X every single time. Uh, except for the last one, because obviously we'll have our answer with it. So, we're going to go down to the letter of Hotel, which in this case is going to be adding... Uh, adding x times 2, and this is what we're going to be doing with, to with our number here. So we're going to add 1 times 2, which in this case is simply going to be 2, which is going to result in a 4. Now, we're going to change x to the number of modules. This is changing, not adding. So uh, there is only one module in the bomb, so we're actually not going to change x in this case because it's still equal to 1. Uh, let's move on to the next letter. We have alpha. Alpha is add x to the number, so we're only going to be adding 1 to the 4, which is going to be a 5. Uh, and then X is going to become the number of indicators. The number of indicators is going to be zero. That is possible to have as X is equal to zero here. So uh, next up, we have Lima here. Uh, if if X is less than is less than five or greater than fifteen, we're going to add seven. In this case, that is true uh, because of the fact that we have um, uh, X is going to be X is going to be zero. So in this case, we're going to make this a plus seven, which is going to be a twelve. And now what we're going to do is we're going to now change x to um, the sum of all previous x values, including the original 1. So in this case, if we take a look back here, uh, we've had a 1 and a 1 for both hotel and alpha, which in this case, the sum of all of the previous x values will result in a 2. Okay, good deal. Next up, we have a uniform. Uniform is going to be uh, the same case as the hotel at x times 2 which in this case is going to be 2 times 2, which is going to be a 4, which is going to be 6, 16. Uh, and then we're going to change it to the number of modules back to 1. And then Bravo, finally, to close this off, is going to be multiply the number by x plus 1, which in this case is going to be multiplying the number by 2. So uh, 16 times this by 2 is going to be a 32. And now uh, we're going to now um, take a look here. If uh, we're going to press the button when the last digit of the timer is equal to the number you end up in modulo 10 which in this case is simply going to be two. So now let's press this on the when the last digit is a two here, and we'll be done. Three, two. And just like that is a solved module. Uh, I'm glad I got the stuff covered that I wanted to today. Uh, it, it was really good. Um, I got some of the more complicated versions. Um, uh, this one, uh, if, in the table below, uh, starting at the cell corresponds to the last digit of the number currently in the module. If the last digit is zero, one, start at the cell, that is X, X cells clockwise from the top left. Uh, we're gonna move in the direction that the number is spinning, a number of cells around the ring equal to the most significant digit of the number on the module. Which in this case, if you happen to have, um, 
for example, 23, for example. So we're going to be uh, starting at the cell corresponding to the last digit, which in this case represents 3. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to move, uh, in this case, if it happened to be moved spinning clockwise, uh, we would simply move two cells clockwise, 1 and 2, which in this case would get us to the 9. Uh, and then repeat the above step until you have hit every single cell. Um, and if you land on a cell you already landed on, move one more cell in the direction you're moving. So in this case, we would go uh, to the 3, 9, 7, 5. And then what we would happen to do is do the 3, then we go to the 4, 6, 8, and then 2. Press the button on the last digit that is equal to the last cell that you land on, which in this case would represent the 2. Now for the module spins, it's going to have three different rotations, and after making its third rotation, it will stop briefly before starting the sequence over again. This will result the module to actually be in some kind of funky position, probably afterwards, although it can stand straight up afterwards too, uh, but essentially it's going to give you three different clues. So if say, for example, you have a, um, a 90 degrees clockwise, uh, or, or 90 degrees, uh, what, am I, what did I have before? It was 90 degrees clockwise, um, or, hmm. It was 180 counterclockwise, it was, it was 90 degrees clockwise, and 180 clockwise. That's right. So, um, the last digit in, in the timer in the word form must be four letters long, which in this case can apply to um, zero. Because we have zero here, we've got four, we've got five. <coughs> we have, uh, what do we have? What else do we have? Uh, nine, and that's it. So we've got these four. So that's our first clue. The last digit of the timer must be even. Uh, well, that helps a lot. That's going to get rid of the 5 and 9. And the second to the last digit of the timer must be on. Now, this can obviously be a clue uh, to... Um, that. This obviously can just be a random number uh, as well. Because this is going to be second to last digit. So you can either press it on a 0 or a 4 being the last digit of the timer. Uh, and the second to the last digit must be on. So it is kind of just some restrictions. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, so that's going to be very important to note down. Um, that's a fairly simple one to do. I like that one a lot too. Uh, it, is, it is kind of cool to see just the module lose its mind. Um, now, finally for the voice plays, a text-to-speech voice will play from the module saying three words. Each word is from a different quote, but two of these words are from the same quote. Uh, and we need to find the one that is the odd one out, essentially. That, is, uh, that does not share the same quote as the other two. We will use the number that is represented as the, um, as the, as the timer, that, the, as the digit that we get. Um, and if it happens to be 10, obviously we'll use 0. Uh, fairly simple one to do. But just make sure that you're ready. The, the best advice that I can give for you is make sure that you are ready for anything to come. Um, it's quite simple to do. Um, all of these rules are fairly easy to understand. Uh, it's just make sure that you are ready for a read to be given. Because in cases, for example, a sound effect will be played or a voice will be played, you will likely not get the read again. Right? In this case, you won't get the read again. There's no, I don't think there's any way to get the read again. Um, so, it's just very important to note down, um, but as always, thank you guys for watching, remember to stay crazy, stay cool, and I will see you guys in the next one, Bye bye <laughs>